Good afternoon. All right, well, I made it over here to Georgia and uh, they've issued a tropical storm warning for Atlanta, which is where I'm delivering tomorrow. So I figured it'd probably be in my best interest to go ahead and install that wiring kit so that in the pickup, I can have a good power source inside the cab so that way i'll be able to charge the laptop phones whatever i'm going to need and that power inverter won't broke and that power inverter won't burn up any more of the outlet so um, this is not the power inverter that's going to be in the pickup in the long run but this will get us situated right now because hurricane irma is coming so we need to get this set and get it ready to go so i figured that that would be a good topic for today is to get this thing installed so i guess let's get to it all right so i've got to clean all my stuff that i store in the passenger floorboard i gotta clean that stuff and get it out of the way that's it, there she is. GoPro drone. Laptop bag. Going out of the way. Okay, come on. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this up. Here. Carve it back a little bit. And that's gonna allow me to see if there's any place to go through the firewall I don't want to drill any holes really and I don't want to go through the bottom let's look on the firewall it doesn't really look like there's much on this side okay so we could go through where the antenna hole is here and that actually is a pretty decent grommet right there so I think what we'll possibly do is just run the wire down the fender and then come through right here. Right now I'm just trying to find a good ground point that'll be good for this power inverter. They didn't send a very long ground cable with this kit. So I think what I'm gonna do is, and you can see they actually already have holes in connectors but the hole is not very big okay so I did I got this spread out a little bit if you can see now it's a bigger hole and I think I'm just gonna use this thumb screw for right now this thumb screw goes into the body so it should provide a good grounding source okay so the first thing that we're going to do is start
start with the M that does not have the fuse on it. So the power terminal is here. And so most likely our routing is going to be off of this rain terminal down along the bottom side of the battery and back up down in here. So So I don't really want to cut off the cable here. So I think what I'll end up doing is leaving the excess wire on this cord. And I have two options. What I can do is I can end up either coiling it here in this small area, or I can coil it inside the fender and only have the amount of cord coming out that I need. Okay, so I've got the cord here and what I'm gonna wanna do is run the wire underneath the carpet and have it the length I want before I decide where I want the extra wire to be held. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a punch. Let me zoom in here. I'm gonna go ahead and use a punch. I'm gonna push into that grommet right there. You always wanna make sure you go through the body through a grommet. And I'm gonna go ahead and push this cable through. And you'll see it come out of this grommet here. If you can see right here so it'll follow the antenna wire out and then it'll duck underneath the carpet and we'll run it along this tray until it comes out here next to this cable and then we can make sure that they're the same length one other place you can put the cable is under the carpet but I don't like to do that because it usually leaves a ridge that you can feel ahead and just pulled the grommet out and that was allowed me to get a good look at it and get a nice tight hole in it I think I'm going to run it right along this channel here. It's probably going to be the best place to lay this cable. And when we get to this wiring loom, we can just lift this up. You little ant. Damn, there's little ants everywhere. Okay, now that we got that all tucked in, I went ahead and left the majority of what was left over on the wiring inside the cabin. And the reason for that was because there wasn't a whole lot left over. So that'll allow me to reposition the permanent amplifier when I get it. without having to go through pulling up the carpet or pulling the wiring back out of the fender. Oh, nice clean routing there. And more ants. All right, so now what I'm gonna do 
is take this wiring and I'm gonna go underneath the carpet and most likely see there's a break in the carpet there but it's got a piece of metal through it so most likely what I'll do is I'll make a small incision in the carpet probably right about there that way I can run this under the carpet and up through that small incision that I'm gonna make sure that is good and tight and that way I have the best possible ground that I can get so I've got the wire stripped down I didn't realize the camera wasn't recording when I did that now that I've got the wire stripped down I can go ahead and put these shields on you want to try to make sure you get all the wires into the fitting so that they don't touch anything else. Pull it right like that. So now, I've got both of my cables on. Uh, this power inverter is equipped with terminals with screw clamps on the end. You'll find this set up in a lot of the higher powered inverter. I'm gonna go ahead and save this because I use that cable whenever I am in the semi truck. I'm just going to go ahead and put that in like that. Screw this down. Now I've got a nice solid connection to both. Now I can go ahead and put this back in. Go ahead and make sure these wires are tucked in. And this end goes in first. Sure those are butted up nice and tight. Just like that. So I'm taking off the nut on the side of the terminal. It's on the outside of the square nut. If you can see this is the square nut here. Now this bolt from the square nut to this nut tightens the battery terminal. This one right here is for auxiliary. Now your car may not have that, so you may have to put it on the other side, but... Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and... Okay. So I just want to make sure this is nice and snug. Okay, so now that I've got everything snugged up, now it's time I can test it. Which, the best way to do that, get the door open so I can listen to it. Put the fuse in. Make sure it's tucked out of the way. I don't want it getting hot on the turp. Now I'll come in here and looks like we've got power there. So I've got this here, it's showing a green light. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in just to test it. Shows that I have power here, I have power here. I'm going to plug it in. Now this is the battery for the drone and it generally draws a lot of power so looks like it's working. You can tell that this is working harder because the fan is on. Now on the 12 volt outlet if it turns the fan on this thing is getting pretty hot so 
I think we've got a good deal here. I did also want to add a 12 volt port attachment to go to this and it will use a ring terminal that will go in here. So I'll go ahead and build that later and that way when my inverter is plugged in also I can have my power strip attached to it but I also will have an auxiliary 12 volt port that will have some major wire to it. Alright so that about does it. Uh, that wraps things up for this install. Uh, the sky looks like it's getting worse and uh, there's starting to be a little bit of wind and it looks like it's going to rain so i'm gonna go ahead and wrap things up clean things up and i will see you guys on down the road